you create all your contacts, for instance, and you do not, let's just edit one real quick, and you do not, do not fill out much data. If you don't give it things like what industry they're in, then you're not going to see that data uh, in your reporting or in your dashboard uh, where it could give you some valuable insight and help you structure some marketing campaigns, etc. Um, there are also case and solution dashboards, but we haven't um, actually talked about cases and solutions yet, so we're going to go to that. Um, but first, um, we want to go to activities, since it's the next tab in the list. And what activities are is sort of any type of interaction with a client. Uh, so an activity, for instance, could be a phone call. And there's a place here to click for new phone call. Let's go ahead and click that real quick. And you can see that when you make a phone call, um, you can record basically the details of the call. And now there's a permanent record associated. If you had three people working in an office, for instance, you probably don't want to call that person uh, twice about the same issue. You want to have a record of when you called them about it. So if they say, well, you never called me about this, uh, you, can, you have notes that you did call them, what the, the time was. If you, um, if you want to time the call and, and show how long you spent on the call, this is a way to do it. That might be useful in a billable time environment where you're charging the person uh, for phone consulting, etc. Or, um, and you charge by the minute or, or you have a base fee of an hour or something like that. Or um, you might do it just to sort of have a record of, hey, you know, we talked for 20 minutes on Tuesday about this. Uh, so, you know, we did give you support time on your issue, etc. But... Um, logging a phone call is just a great professional feature so that all communications are tracked within your CRM. The beauty of a CRM is it's not just a contact manager. It's designed to track all of your interactions with the client. Um, you also have the ability to add new events. An event could be any type of an appointment, an educational event, a seminar, um, anything that involves um, you know, an action. It might be an action item where they have to do something. Uh, so just keep in mind that how you structure that um, it can be different than how other people structure it. For instance, um, under activities we have new task, and new task is designed specifically for actions or action items, but you could do it all under events. You don't have to have two different rubrics for that. Events are really natively designed the other way, but that's fine. So new tasks. Um, under tasks, you can create something like, you know, file these documents or switch over your mortgage or any number of other uh, items that, you know, you require that uh, that this person either do or that you do related to their account. Now keep in mind that if you put items in here that they need to do, you're the only one tracking them. Uh, they're not going to see this. Um, so, so that's not really b beneficial unless your office needs to be able to track the to-dos that that person has. If you have a standard process that most clients follow, uh, then there's no reason to keep inputting the same to-dos over and over for each client. If, if they're unique, maybe you want to have them attached to that particular client record. Uh, and then you can just have a master list somewhere of the things that you require most people to do, uh, you know, your professional process uh, for completing the sale. Now, what these tasks are most useful for is internal tasks. So, for instance, if there are several people collaborating on an account, uh, or if it's possible that somebody gets sick and someone else has to pick up where they left off to, to meet deadlines, it's nice to know what things uh, are outstanding that need to be done in related relation to this account. account. If you have something to file, if you need to schedule an appointment, if you need to do a follow-up call, that's what tasks might be. It would be things that people that work for your company need to do in relation to a particular account. And then you have statuses like, hey, have we done that task? Have we completed it? Is it in progress so we don't have somebody else interfere with it? Is it waiting on someone in particular, like I can't do this until Janet gives me more information, etc.? Uh, is it deferred? We're not going to do this because something else has occurred. Uh, how, what's the priority? You can set the task. This is a lot like in a lot of systems you see what's called a bug tracker, but, but this is your back office. This is internal. So these are lists of things that you as professionals need to do in relation to this particular account lead. It might be follow-up call with this lead. It might be, you know, uh, they want you to call their spouse and have given you the number and have told the spouse it's okay to talk with you, etc. There may be any number of things you want to do with a task. You can also add campaigns right under your activities, which is really nice. Uh, you can add new potentials, new contacts, new accounts, and new leads. So when you're under activities, by clicking on any one of these, it just takes you to the appropriate tab on top and lets you uh, treat it all as activities. Uh, so that's kind of handy. And you'll find that the, this little row of items appears on multiple um, tabs at the top. You'll find this sort of sub-navigation there. All right, so now we're going to go to cases. And what cases are is um, issues that need to be resolved with regard to a client. Like, f 
for instance, you've run into a hitch or there's a support issue. Now keep in mind that we're going to be using Zoho support. Uh, so you may not want to necessarily use the case management uh, system within the CRM because you're going to use Zoho support to provide them a, a user front end, a, a customer service portal, and that's going to help track your cases. Uh, and I do hope that one day we'll have um, full case integration between Zoho CRM and Zoho support. I don't think that's in place right now. So you either you probably want to think about do I want to maintain all this in the CRM as as sort of double bookkeeping or not. What this may be useful for for you if you're using Zo Zoho support for, to manage cases, this may be useful for sort of internal cases where you're not interacting with the client, the client hasn't requested the case, or it's not something that you need to talk with the client about. Uh, it's something that uh, needs to be handled internally. For instance, internally you've run into a hitch filing someone's paperwork or uh, completing a particular task and uh, you know someone needs to open a case and say, look, uh, we need to resolve this issue. Uh, then that case is now tracked and visible to all the users. Remember a key fact of a CRM, and that is that a CRM is is even more useful in an environment where you have multiple administrators logging in or multiple users uh, or employees. Um, so if um, if the attorney, for instance, logs in and then the attorney's assistant logs in, they both see the same set of cases and they can interact with them. So when you create a case, a case, think of it as a problem, and you can input how the how the problem was transmitted to you. Uh, did did you get a call? Did you get an email? Was there some other way? Did you get it off of the website? And again, you may not use this in this way because of Zoho support. You may choose to use this just for. Uh, internal cases, but you can escalate the case. Um, okay, so I, as the assistant, can't handle it. It's going to have to be escalated to uh, the attorney, or you might look at your escalation system the other way around. I, the attorney, can't handle it. I'm going to escalate it to my assistant, uh, or you can put it on hold, or you can close it. Uh, you get to put in which account it's related to, or which potential name, etc. Uh, descriptions, internal comments, all kinds of details. Um, so we don't want to go into great detail of for creating this today, uh, but we do want to say that there are cases and then there are solutions. And a solution is a typical solution to a typical scenario. So whenever we run into this issue, this is how we resolve it. We make this phone call and there's this internal person we need to talk to at the county, etc. Um, well, you may want to have that recorded, a sort of Q&A in an FAQ type of environment, a, a frequently asked question. This is not, again, to show external clients, but this is for your internal workforce. The people that work in your office may only run into a particular problem once every six weeks, but they, want, they, don't, they need a record of how do we solve that when we run into it. Well, this create a solution is a way of doing that. It's a set of standard solutions. When you run into this, call this person. Uh, when you run into this issue filing this paperwork, you need to attach this addendum. And so there's a question, how do I solve this? There's an answer, and then there's a title for that particular solution to help people find it. Let's go ahead and create one, since this is really easy. Uh, so, um, document refused by county. All right, and so we're going to put this, uh, this as the title, and then we're going to have the question, what do I do if the county sends the something document back refused and stamped rejected and the answer is attach addendum 1044 C and refile but send to the auxiliary office. There you go. All right, and then we can decide whether um, we want to save this as a draft and someone else can approve it or sign off on it, whether we want to say, no, it's been reviewed already, it's fine, etc. So we're just going to go ahead and save this. And now we have a solution in our database. So when we look at solutions, we click on that tab, there it is. And we can also search solutions, we can look at solutions by alphabetical order, etc. So it's a nice way to sort of document your standard solutions. So that is um, an overview of Zoho CRM. Again, you've got home, which is your central home page, and you'll start to see data populating here. So for instance, we have leads today that have come in, uh, things that are closing this month, 
and pipelines by stage are related to potentials. If I don't want that, for instance, I can close it and it says, oh, you're sure you want to remove this off of your home page? Yes. And I can add additional things on my home page later. For instance, if what I would really rather see is campaign information or uh, dashboard information, such as some of those pie charts, I can add those uh, to my home page instead. So this is meant to be your sort of at-a-glance page that you add components from the other tabs to so that you can see at a glance. Then you have your leads. And we talked about that. That's the equivalent of prospects. You have accounts, which is sort of like when you have a group or a family uh, in which many contacts consist. You have the contacts, which are the individual people. Potentials are if you're going to do more of a full sales process and you're going to sort of take people through multiple stages, such as uh, an interview and then um, qualifying them and then you know a follow-up call and a proposal and winning the account, etc. And that's really useful if you're going to do professional sales, um, it, which can obviously increase revenue. So keep in mind it gives you some structure and some nice documentation of where you are in the sales process. It may seem like a lot, but when you're tracking you know, 20 or 30 people, um, it can get really confusing where you are with each person since different people are at different stages all the time. Campaigns are your marketing campaigns for tracking and interacting and deciding how to parcel them out with relation to whether it goes to certain leads or certain contacts or certain industries, etc. Reports, you already know what that is. Uh, dashboards, we talked about as kind of a summary set of graphs of reports. And again, you can choose uh, which type of dashboards you want to show up, such as leads, etc. Solutions are standard solutions that uh, you are creating for internal resolution of various problems so that um, you know multiple people know how to do things. If somebody's not there, I can look in the solutions to see how they solve it or what they do in a certain situation, uh, etc. And then also it's really great, by the way, if you have these unique things that only one person knows, you really want to put those into your solutions database because uh, what if something happens to that person? It happens all the time. They get sick. They move on to another job. Uh, whatever it may be, somebody has to retain that knowledge. So look at it as a kind of a knowledge database uh, for how to solve various problems and deal with certain um, exigencies. And then activities are any activities related to a particular client, which is really all, it's what a CRM is about. So that's an overview of Zoho CRM. Uh, I wanted to mention before uh, we end this video and, and allow you to go to the next segment that um, before we go into Zoho support and talk about that, when you create a contact in Zoho CRM, which should be your master record of contact information because it's very detailed. It gives you thing, places to put things like uh, their industry and, and et cetera, and lots and lots of information. You have to create a user in Zoho support to give somebody access to your portal. They don't automatically, just by creating them in your contact database, get access to your customer service portal. You have to grant access. However, when you create them, all it needs to give them access is a name and an email address. So there is some level of integration and more coming between the CRM and support. But keep in mind, your master point of recording contact data is always going to be the CRM, the Customer Relation Manager. All right, um, the next video will detail or, or go into uh, an overview of Zoho support. Uh, thank you very much.